On November 13th, a space object is predicted to slam into the Earth's atmosphere and break up at high elevation above the surface. Now, astronomers forecast that this object uh, is going to enter the Earth's atmosphere over the Indian Ocean at about 11 kilometers per second, or 40,000 kilometers per hour. And if anything survives the Fury plunge then, the very little bit of this uh, object is going to land in the Indian Ocean south of uh, Sri Lanka at 11.50 a.m. Sri Lanka time, or 6.20 Greenwich Mean Time. If the weather cooperates, people in the far southern portion of Sri Lanka may be lucky enough to see a bright fireball streaking across the sky for a few seconds. The telescope at the University of Arizona with the Catalina Sky Survey uh, discovered the object on October 3rd. And uh, based on those observations and observations since then, the astronomers determined that this is an object that they had actually seen it at least twice before going as far back as uh, December 2012 without recognizing it. So now knowing the orbit of this object, the, uh, the object received a temporary designation WT1190F uh, in accordance with the, uh, the uh, naming convention of uh, discovering a new asteroid. Now the object has an unusual elongated orbit. Based on the observations then, uh, we now know that this object comes as close to about 59% the distance to the geostationary satellite orbit or 22,000 uh, kilometer above the Earth's surface. But at the far point, this object stretch out to 1.7 times the average distance of the moon to the Earth, and this corresponds to 655,000 kilometers. Because of this great range in distance, the already very dim uh, WT1190F can get even dimmer by about 100 times. That explains why astronomers lost track of it quite a few times in over the years and not being able to keep track over a long period of time then. Now this object is very peculiar because of its orbit around uh, the Earth and the Moon. Um, based on the brightness observation, astronomers deduce that this object is about 1 to 2 meters across with a density of about 10% of water. Now this likely rules out the possibility of an asteroid because we know of no asteroid with that kind of low density. So the alternative is this could be a piece of space hardware and, and because it goes uh, beyond the orbit of the Moon then, uh, this could be a discarded upper stage, uh, uh, such as a spent uh, propellant fuel tank that launched a mission to the moon then. Now, one very interesting possibility is that uh, this could be the long lost uh, lunar mile, module of Apollo 10 mission. Ignition sequence start. Engines on five, four, three, two. All engines running. Launch commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff 49 minutes past the hour. Now this is the last practice mission uh, in May 1969. Before we landed two astronauts on the moon on that historic Apollo 11 mission two months later. Got a beautiful view of the Earth here, but it's absolutely fantastic. Now, in this uh, dress rehearsal mission, NASA astronaut uh, Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan navigated the lunar module, which has a nickname uh, Snoopy, to uh, as low as 15 kilometers above the, the moon's surface. Then they commanded the lunar module to ascend back to the orbiting command module, which has a nickname Charlie Brown. Now, as soon as the two vehicles are docked, they have now completed demonstrating the capability of the lunar module. So this is no longer needed, so they jettisoned the lunar module and fire the uh, engine on the ascent stage to uh, send it into an orbit around the sun. Okay, Houston, we'll give you a count now. We're all set to go for seven. Give me a five count. Four, three, two, one, fire. Damn, when he leaves, he leaves. Yeah, it was right into the sun, babe, right into the sun. Now, it is possible that at a later time, um, the Earth or the Moon capture the lunar module again into this uh, uh, present uh, elongated orbit. Now, in fact, this scenario happened to the Apollo 12 mission uh, to the Saturn V uh, rocket, the upper stage. It was jettisoned and then sent into uh, orbit around the Sun. But at a later time, uh, the Earth or the Moon recapture it into an unstable orbit around the Earth. Then. Now, WT1190F, uh, since it's going around the Earth, and then swings out further than the moon then, 
gravitational perturbation uh, of both the Earth and the Moon has changed its orbit many times, so it becomes impossible to trace the object back to its original orbit, so we don't know its identity then. It is very rare for astronomers to be able to find a space object in advance, know its precise orbit, and be able to de determine the, the uh, entry, location, and time. So now it gives the near-Earth uh, object community a very good opportunity to coordinate a, a campaign to monitor, observe uh, this object, and mount a scientific mission to collect data on the uh, entering of the object. The European Space Agency is leading the effort uh, through the Space Situation Awareness Office. Um, it's going to fly a, a uh, Gulfstream 450 business jet to take five scientists on board with cameras and instruments to record the event and specifically some of the instruments would look at the spect spectroscopy of the light ball, or the fireball from the object that comes through the uh, atmosphere. Now this is going to be a very challenging campaign. They need to know where this object is going to enter the Earth atmosphere as good as they can get so they can determine the trajectory fly the aircraft alongside, and the biggest challenge is they have perhaps no more than 10 seconds of time to point the, all the instruments and cameras towards that fireball. So it is going to be very challenging, but it will be very rewarding to collect all the data because all that data is going to help verify uh, and uh, fine-tune and improve the prediction capability of future asteroid and space debris entering the Earth's atmosphere. to analyze the, the light from the fireball could offer an interesting clue about the nature of this object because the, the paint on the object could, could uh, reveal itself through spectral signature. So that would be very interesting to see if this object is indeed uh, the Apollo 10 lunar module Snoopy. Now just in case you're curious about the name WT1190F, uh, with all these letters W, T, and F, this is not a joke. They do have some meaning. W represent the year 2015. So any uh, near-Earth asteroid discovered next year would start with the uh, letter X. T is, is the letter assigned to the first half of October. The first one refers to the uh, Smith Telescope that, uh, at uh, University of Arizona with the Catalina Sky Survey. And the last four digits are simply a counter. Charlie, we just saw Earthrise, and it's got to be magnificent. Charlie, I don't know how the big man must see things, but if his view is any better than ours, uh, it's got to be fantastic. Yeah, 